Apex Online Racing is sponsored by Elgato, who created this lovely stream deck. For more information about the stream deck, the link is in the description below. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. My name is Sir Murray Walk, aka Mr. Evil Dragon X. A year older today, boy here, and welcome to the finest circuit. Welcome to Warren Lelisart, situated, of course, in France. We'll talk about that more later on. But again, joining me today on this beautiful April the 1st evening, it is the one and only, it is Miss Jess. Hey, hello again, Jess. Good evening, Evil. Good evening, everybody. Hope everyone is doing fine and uh, hope everyone is staying safe in this lockdown period. And last week, Evil, was just a fantastic race. It was great to see the drivers back again. And uh, we saw an unfamiliar face on the top step of the podium. So it was it was great to see new faces actually battling it out for the win that we're usually expecting. Yeah, new faces, old surprises. We have a partner running up there at the top. The uh, Both of the VSR drivers struggling in the race where they both could not get the car hooked up. They are hoping for a stronger race today around a circuit, which is going to be more about um, consistency than outright pace. Narrow, twisty, rounds its way around, of course, the outskirts of El Elisart, the little uh, area known as Rowan. And the circuit not too far away from the city of Normandy, of course, where the well, well, if you know World War II, you know this circuit, or this, you know what Normandy is indeed. Well, first race was held in 1950, most commonly known for the Formula One. Last held race in 1994 on a circuit that's very much remained the same up until that point, and that is the reason why it no longer exists. And today, Jazz, I feel we might just be proving why it might not be usable anymore. Yeah, exactly. And these are one of those races where uh, consistency is key. Because it's not just one race uh, the drivers will have to face today. It is two races. A new format, which is going to be trial for GT3. But it has been um, in the Philly for quite some time now. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if it works. So we'll start with qualifying as per usual, 15 minutes. And then there's going to be a sprint race of 11 laps. And then there's going to be, after that, a feature race with... 23 laps where uh, the top eight will be reversed so whoever finished in the top eight in the sprint race the person who started who finished eighth they will start on pole and then seventh second etc 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 all remaining drivers will uh, start in the, their finishing positions and then it'll be the aor rolling start in the sprint race it'll just be a normal standing start as soon as the fire lights go on they can go so uh should bring out some interesting strategies and uh, also evil and uh, no mandatory pit stops required but i think we'll probably see a few people going into the pits maybe in well potentially cause damage the circuit narrow areas to look out for and we'll uh, talk to them when we are uh, in the server as well is going to be the narrow first couple of corners to happen as well and of course that winding tricky uphill west section of course that little kink down the straight which can easily catch drivers out but uh, we've got a hot lap ready for us, Jess, I believe, don't we? Yes, yes, we do. And uh, that is going to be driven and commentated by our very own uh, TO coordinator, Jazzman. So I hope you enjoy. Yo, guys, Jazzman, yep. Taking you around the track for our race this evening for the AOR GT3 Tier 1 League. Heading into the first corner, you want to just keep it in sixth. Easy, easy, easy flat. Just avoid these curbs on the outside as they are very dangerous. Uh, next corner you want to just have a dab of the brake, get down into fifth. That automatically just pushes the front of the car down and makes it easier to go through. This is an easy flat, this next corner. Now we're here quite a tricky braking zone as, it's, as this is very tight and quite a big heavy braking zone into the tight 
hairpin. You want to try and get on the par as early as possible and open up the steering. So you can get a good exit. Heading up now, this is our fast left hander. Uh, what you want to do here is just do a tiny lift off to just get the nose of the car to hunker down and point into the corner. Then you just go back on full throttle. This next corner is very important. This left hander, you want to get a good exit above all, you know, above anything else. As any, this is a very long straight coming, so any time gained is massive. This next right hander here is very tricky, um, especially on full fuel. Um, it's very difficult, but you want to try go through there at full throttle as it can gain a lot of time. Now we're into the back straight, it's very long. <laughs> um, the key, uh, what you want to do is try to uh, minimize your steering input as you can scrubble for a lot of speed if you uh, are doing too much steering input. Um, now we're heading into the possibly I would say the heaviest braking zone on the game. You want to brake just before you need to so you can get on to the power as early as possible. So it allows you to open up the corner and be allowed to hit the you know the throttle about that split second earlier which gains you a couple, a couple of kilometers um, at the end of the straight. Uh, we went to the final corner if you want to call it that and now we're on to the main straight. This has been a lap of Rowan Les Estriats I think that's how you say it. I apologize if I butchered it but <laughs> this has been Chaz Van and I'll see you guys on track. Okay so I hope you enjoyed that hot lap from uh, Mr. Jazz Man and uh, before we get to qualifying, which has just begun, we are going to go through the standings from last week. So obviously, Papano won last week in the squad with Demon Team. He has 50 points to his name. And then we got Jasko in second place. And then we've got uh, Bodhi in third place. I need to remember their PSN names. Then we've got um, Raxa in fourth place with 26 points. Fifth place, we've got Gaza in 23 points. Sixth place, Big Kid Daddy. He had a pretty good result last time about in sit. Then we got VSR Road Tree, one of the first VSR guys in seventh. Leonardo in eighth. Then we got Scold in ninth. Defino in tenth. Uh, Wolf uh, was an interesting story from last week. He ran out of fuel last week, but he still managed to get to the end, so he's still quite classified. Then we have Vetro in twelfth and the thirteenth. And basically, it's just like your race results, and your only DNFs were uh, Fogarty and uh, Jazzman. Unfortunately, Jazzman has some technical issues. And the team's championship then. we got Squad Regiment in the lead with 70 points. And we got Gaza and Raza Ra Raxa Racing in second. Motor Racing Team in third. Squad Recourse Ditori in Ferrati. I think I said that wrong. With 32 points. Visual Racing in fifth with 24 points. And we got um, Koseki Raging Ball Academy. What a name. 23 points. Shed Racing in seventh with 14 points. With HTP Motorsport yet to score and without third will do evil we are going to go straight to qualify him indeed well welcome everyone to the circuit welcome to what is i know as almost as narrow as the nervo great welcome to the circuit that hosts formula one for quite a few years and welcome to someone who's currently driving off the side of the circuit so yeah getting out of the way we're currently looking at wolfman down into this tricky little hairpin right now and you look at this circuit and you think, oh, maybe that's not so difficult. It looked very um, intriguing, very uh, fast last sector, very fast first sector. And you've got this little leg, I suppose, in the middle. It's, um, so some people may say it looks like some certain object. Some people can say other things. But it's a very tricky circuit. Cobble streets lying on some of the corners. These giant curb stones, we'll see here, we'll go on board with... Uh, our driver of Wolf, and we can see what's up for this corner here. That outside barrier easily to snatch a car. You clip that, you're going off into the wall. As you've seen already, damage and debris down the right side of the circuit. Someone already has gone off that, and that was Dafino earlier on, just whilst we were uh, doing that little section there. But the question is, just though, throughout this race, it's going to be about who's going to be consistent, who's not going to hit the wall. If you hit the wall, you're going to be in a big, big, big lot of trouble. Exactly, and as we were saying earlier on as well, oh, what's oh. happened to Wolf there? <laughs> he was like stationary for a minute there. Um, but uh, yeah, as I was saying earlier on, Evil, they don't have to make pit stops unless they have damage. So the ones that don't have damage, they can uh, go till the end of this race without uh, having to pit. But the most crucial thing also about, as well as consistency, is the fuel saving, because obviously... Uh, idea they don't want to pit again for fuel. They want to make sure fuel can last to the end. Obviously, quality, they can have quality fuel, but the race, they've got to do some calculations to make sure they can just have enough fuel 
to uh, get to the end. Some of these drivers may not have experienced the filler leagues before, so it's something new for some of them. But like BSR Road 3, he has had experience, so he should be fine. Um, but for some other people, it may be a lot difficult. There is quite a few new drivers to this tier, so it should be a learning curve. But, you know, we have seen some drivers that have um, done well under pressure, so we'll have to wait and see, Evil. Yep, so far, Ethan puts himself in my position. Got Damons on the front end, I am seeing on my screen at least. So everyone has set a lap time. Leonardo last to set a lap time there. Not a competitive lap time, might I add as well. He's weaving that is gold, I believe. Right behind him there in the good old shed. And let's see, the shed flies up the inside. And there he goes. And Scott, who's hoping here to be doing extremely well. That car look very loose on the rear end. I was talking to him quite recently. He, he doesn't have as much grip. As others might uh, expect, however, it's a nimble little bugger, and hopefully you can see what he can do. It's, um, of course, the oldest car here. It's built in a shed, if you haven't known it. He's a shed boy, so uh, our old friend Jimmy might enjoy that one. But I always prefer that car. It's a purely little car, isn't it, Jess? Yeah, I love it. Oh, as he's hitting the brake remarkable. There's people that are not going to like that whatsoever. And oh, it's nearly going to hit the... I think it's one is either Defino or Leonardo that's going to get past that. I'm not entirely sure who, but yeah, that was annoying. Uh, no, Leonardo. I was close. I was close. Right team, but uh, wrong driver. But there we go. But luckily, I think by the looks of it, he's absolutely fine. But uh, we did see uh, Jazzman set a good lap time in the hot lap, but we've already seen people beat that. Tennis is on pole at the moment. 150.6. But the gaps uh, behind that are starting to close up a little bit between first and potentially uh, seventh place, all separated by a second. And uh, I think it's Wolfman in seventh. For if I don't know which VSR guy is in uh, seventh. That'd be Wolf. Yeah, that's Wolf. I thought so. I got it right. And uh, yeah, a, quite a few people will probably want to get their toe in some of the straights, but this kind of reminds me of Monaco in a sense, where it is quite narrow to overtake and uh, some other bits. Also reminds me of Le Mans as well. Um, in particular, this type of road as well. That, that of The roads in France are obviously quite similar as well. So I can understand why some roads are similar to Le Mans. But uh, yeah, should be very interesting now. Esther is in the pits. Everybody's out right now. Seven minutes left to go of this session. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see um, in the calm before the storm happens. If anyone can improve on their laps. Leonardo in 15th, 2 minutes 6. He's got a lot of work to do, but he's not showing his true pace yet. But he's getting a feel of the car because he's probably haven't driven in this track before. So, apart from practice, of course. So, yeah, hopefully he could uh, do well here today. I mean, well, even coming across the line, let's see, can he get his car up the field so far? We're going on board with that, on board that with one of the faster drivers and one of the leading VSR members right now, yet again, being beaten by his younger prodigy, might I add. And, Hopefully, of course, this circuit very difficult. Ethan himself said he's not expecting to be doing well in qualifying. He might not even do qualifying, he said, because he doesn't want to be caught up in incidents behind him. He doesn't want to come ahead of him. Right now, he's slap bang in the middle of the field, which is about is not where you want to be as anything. Right now, let's see. First sector is uh, not valid yet. So, unfortunately, we can't see where he's coming, what time he's doing. But this uphill left hand almost flat, a small lift off then. For the cars, no touch of the brake pedal. The car wants to skate off to the right into that fence. Gotta hold it to the inside. Why well, you don't got the car on the outside here, as I found out uh, last night when I skated off there. A little bit of that, unfortunately, there on the uh, car. So uh, a shame we see that. Into this tricky corner. This is the difficult one. Go wide here. That barrier, you clip that, your car will be over, over, and out. And as you've seen before, very easy. I think that might be. Potentially just a little bit up the road. No, I think that might be a uh, scold. Then no, it's not scold. So never mind. It was I saw a car up the road and it's white, so it could be anyone really. But um, that's, here comes Rotary down the back straight. Then never ending. It is. It's almost five, six car lengths wide, so you can get a lot of cars down it. And it is uh, Esser, I believe that is actually in the other Janetta. Scold with a one place grid penalty, we believe, down the back. So it's not really running a little bit too wide through the penultimate corner. Behind him, I might add, that is one of the Lamborghinis. I'm not sure who that is. Is it Parno? It is Parno right behind him then. So, Lamborghini, again, looking strong here. Fogarty, meanwhile, down the back of the grid as now Leonardo goes up to 10th position. Okay, so it is a calm before the storm, pretty much, as people are going to go into the pit soon to uh, 
get their last fuel load in where some of the guys are just about to start their laps and they're probably going to go uh, for their final runs now if they've got enough fuel in of course you can see quite a lot of traffic even going around this back straight i'm guessing it's a popular time for them to go and set their laps McWolf is probably going to get a tow from Big Kid Daddy, I think. I think that's the car right in front of him. So I don't think Big Kid Daddy is wanting that. So that's why he's weaving everywhere. But he's got, he, Wolfman is going to get it anyway. Uh, Big Kid Daddy's teammate is right behind Jasko. No, it's around. Oh, it's the it's other way around. around. So Jasko's in front. Uh, Big Kid Daddy's behind. Uh, oh, my word. Almost, almost. So Jasko's in front. Um, obviously, Jasko came uh, did very well last week. And then we also got Big Kid Daddy who I was speaking to after the race, he was really impressed with his pace. He wasn't expecting to be where he was. Um, I expect high things for him. And obviously, um, that they're both looking good, um, scoring good points. And uh, it's really helping them in the constructors. I'm just trying to find out where they are. So, uh, Squadra, uh, Squadra Demon, which was a bit... Oh, wait, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know what uh, team they were on anyway. We've done a team video last week and we've already forgotten it. But never mind, this wolf is... Uh, Wolfman is already coming towards traffic. He's not going to like it one bit. The car behind up, Big Kid Daddy, he's going to like this. He's got a bit of clean air in front of him. But, uh, yeah, it, it, I, 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 I've I driven a lap around this this morning. Um, or it was last night, actually. It was probably the most hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So I d it, it's really, really fast, especially around here. If you get it wrong, obviously, as you are speaking earlier, then you would uh, probably go into the wall. So uh, I don't know how these drivers are going to feel when they set their faster laps right now. I think it is time to put the pressure on these drivers, Evil, as they're going to set their quick laps now with three minutes to go of the session. Well, but still, a modern wolf gets right to the wall there ahead of him. Jasko did touch that wall then. Luckily, no damage. And we mentioned earlier on that uh, down towards that one of those hairpins we just came for a minute ago. You clipped the outside there. That's where Skull went off, remember, earlier on. Hit that, uh, what really isn't the brake marker one. It's more just telling you when the next corner is. So, uh, at all near where the braking zone is for some reason but uh, alas wolf getting a nice long toe off the back of jasko here so we'll see what his lap time can do he's coming through the bottom of the circuit right now tricky braking zone here those couple of streets of course very easy to drag you out now through that last corner i was speaking to vector and ethan earlier on the car will also will just seem to drag itself onto the grass because of course it's a little bit of a cambered corner to the outside as there you can see jasko i think he's coming in the pit lane yes he is Wolf there has to get out the way of it there. That might cost him a couple of times. Let's see, look. Does he get himself up the grid? No, he's uh, 50 thousandths of a second down. Big Kid Daddy, though, does improve a little bit, I think, actually, and now puts himself ahead of Wolf. Uh, further down the field, uh, we've got Fogarty. He's put himself up to top position. Vectra down in last position. The man who was shifted up to tier two. He said he's feeling okay in the Ferrari, but he's considering changing it. But of course, he's only. What is one tenth off of the Janelle, of course, which to me uh, definitely looks like a good old Dodge Viper from the front with the giant British flag on the side of it, proving it is British, of course. What's the line? Let's see what the Shed Boy can do. Puts himself five times <laughs> up, puts him up to 12th position. His teammate, meanwhile, down in 14th position. Of course, Shed Racing not having the best of the um, beginning of the season. Essa didn't do as well as uh, he would have liked. Let me scope did particularly well last week as well. However, it is a nimble car, it's quick, and in some situations, it can be a very, very fast, fun-pacing car, as I think that might be Tinnis coming through then, past Essa, it is up the hill. Like I said, hey, don't get the curb too much on the outside, because you get those curbs, you can go on the garage to get away, if you clip the, uh, clip the curbs, uh, then you're going round, and unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do about that when you go off on this circuit, because, well, on one side, you can see all the right, it's banking and uh, dirt and death. On the left side, well, on the right side, it's fence, barrier, rebound, death. So <laughs> it really funnels you in. Of course, down the main straight as well. And that's going to be the key thing. The drivers have been told if someone needs to pit, they have to flash the lights because we'll go on board with uh, Tinnis in a second. We've only got 43 seconds to go in the session. You know, really just see how wide it is here and then just how narrow it really gets just down here. Yeah, definitely. Especially when you go down here towards uh, this straight here. It, it, it's just hard to uh, turn in just at the right time because if you turn wrong, then you're going to lose so much speed. And uh, speaking of uh, cars, actually, uh, we were speaking about this last week, Evil, but the Mercedes seems to be the faster car right now. As obviously we've got a tennis in pole position right now. 
Um, obviously, last week we saw that the Lamborghini was quite fast, but I think this week we're going to probably see a change in a tune, which is good to see that we're seeing different cars each week be uh, faster. But uh, I can't remember if Boy Rax, yeah, Boy Rax is in a Mercedes. So we've got Mercedes 1 2 at the moment. So uh, that is proving my theory quite right here. So the checkered wow. flag has uh, dropped. And I think Tinnis has just crossed the line. Am I right? I, I'm losing track of uh, the no, line. No, Tinnis, Tinnis has been a pole for a while, Jess. And I, I'm, oh, a bit of rear end stepping out there. Oh, no. Oh, oh, yeah, no, it's that not the line. It's not the line. Okay. Lamborghini, I might add, by the way. Um, it, it's not a Mercedes 1 2. It's a Lamborghini 1 3 right now. But we're actually in second. It's a Mercedes 2 and 4 because Jazz oh. Gazza is right behind. Then we've got the other Lamborghinis. Behind, then everyone else is in the pit. So we've only got three drivers to set a lap time, and they're all together. Tinnis has backed off of his lap time, I believe that. Um, right now, Gaza's all down out, between oh. Gaza and Boyaraxa, and Gaza getting a massive toe of his team here right now. So these two working in tandem to try and get themselves up to pole position. Then, now you get if you get a toe around here, it's almost like the mod, it's almost like some of the other circuits. It's mega around this circuit, this last sector. Incredible. He's up by just over a tenth of a second with two tenths up. So that should put him ahead of Jasmine. It should put him very close to his teammate. He's getting more and more at toe. This is crucial between these two drivers working perfectly together. As long as he doesn't go too deep into the corner, which he does not, he should be able to get this last corner done. Now, this last corner, like I said earlier on, by many corners, very difficult. Get too wide, you're off in the barrier. Get too shallow, you're off into the barrier. You have to do it perfectly. What's out for people to overtake down there later on? But this should be a very good lap from Gaza. It might just put himself on second on the road. He's got a mega toe by his teammate. Where's it? Put him in pits and third just behind his teammate. That is pretty, pretty good. You can tell that those teammates are working together. And uh, Gaza and Rax are a very good partnership um, that is made for uh, this tier. And uh, hopefully they're going to keep this up as well. They're second in the team standings. 21 points behind Squadra Demon. So... Um, they've got uh, not that far to catch up, really. So we've got uh, Tinnis on pole position by two tenths of a second um, to uh, Boy Raxa. But Gaza, you can see the Toro's made a difference, really. Two is about um, not that far behind his teammates. So that's pretty good between Boy Raxa and uh, Gaza. We've got then Jazzman. And then we've got uh, Jasco. Then we've got Big Keep Daddy. Then Wolfman, Papano, Leonardo, and Def then Defino. And I'm trying to scroll down to the rest of the field. There we go. We got VSR Rotary um, in 11th. Skull 12th. Uh, Bogarty 13th. And I know Vetro was in. No, Essa 14th. And Vetro down in last place, Evil. Indeed, Vetro down at the back yet again. Struggling in tier one. But hopefully, of course. Every cloud has a silver lining. And hopefully, he can jump up the field in due course. But right now, of course, remember 11 laps ahead of the drivers. This is, is the sprint race, of course. Then comes that feature race later on. And we'll see what can happen down there. So, inside line is going to be crucial here. So, what's out for Boyer Axel? The Mercedes, you know, is very quick off the start. But remember, grid starts as well, Jess. Anything can happen. And we just hope that everything down towards turn number one is going to be clean. Because the last couple of times I've seen this circuit, it hasn't ended too well. It ended just about okay last night in the evaluation race. However, one or two cars did have a, I'd say, quite a big accident. I might say I may have flicked once or twice. <laughs> you can't drive that well. It does. That's and why you're in the commentary what? box. That's why I have been dumped in the commentary box. Yes, indeed. Well, Wolf down there in seventh. His teammate down there in 11th. He's down the back of the grid as well, pretty much. And the only Mercedes next to him is going to be Fogarty. Then comes the two sheds. And then down the back comes the... Uh, Team from Maranello, who is going to be very disappointed, that is, I think, Enzo Ferrari, being behind the uh, Shed Boys. But it is Lamborghini's up front. It is the Mercedes in second. Then it's Mercedes, Lambo, 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 Mercedes. Then Lambo, 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 Lambo. Then two Mercedes, <laughs> then two Genetas, and then that Ferrari down the back. So a very much one of two halves then. The entire top, uh, what, the top in top uh, 12, either Mercedes or Lamborghini. That is incredible. Then the rest of the field behind. But let's get ready then. Five red lights are on. And then they're off. They're underway. Then it is a good start. Then immediately for Boy Raptor. But then Tinnis immediately covers them off. They're down towards turn one. But crucially, though, everyone's going to get away from the start. It seems correctly. Tinnis leads Boy Raptor. Leads Gaza. Is everyone going to become clean through turn two? That is the question. 
but crucially low for 10 as he's gone away day okay the top four up and there goes to this wide at the background there one car on the curb but let me again say that everyone clean though for turn one for turn two jasmine on the curb on the outside but no mistakes there as it comes down to the old hairpin that is good to see from these drivers. I mean, they've only got 11 laps to prove themselves and the race is over in, two, uh, in uh, lap one, really. So they're driving a little bit more cautious as we've seen quite a few people uh, making moves off the start. Vetro has already made two positions already. He's up into 13th place. He could potentially lose one though because Skold is pressuring him at the moment. And the two uh, teammates from uh, Chev Racing not doing very well at the moment. Esther down in last place, Skold down in 14th. So, uh, Retro got the best of him there um, in the, the Ferrari uh, 488 team. Indeed, well, by Rats up. Oh, Jasmine! Sorry, Tennis hit the wall. Tennis has gone into the wall. He's got damage. He's got cars off in the background. Debris kicking up everyone. We've got one car off in the background. Huge drive in the background there. One car off. That has got to be Dafino in the wall. It has to be. It is Dafino in the wall. And we said how dangerous that was earlier on. He's hit the wall. Ooh. Tennis has got trouble as well. We've got Cardi's in the middle of the pack as well because they've got one car going slow as well and i think that must be papana in damage it is papana in damage as well uh. as Pana, and your race leader crucially in damage as well and i think that must be race suspension damage jasmine has a look up the inside but crucially now for the two mercedes they lead one and two yep they kept kept out of trouble there avoided the carnage and uh, that's why they're one and two at the moment but tinners is probably going to have to go into the pit soon biggest gainers wolfman in third oh. place at the moment he could get a uh, uh, tennis soon but we got a big kid daddy having a really great start he could be under pressure from leonardo who still might have a bit of a show it has to be contact it contact. has to be contact oh no and you might both go in the wall they're not careful what's up behind for Ethan? he's gonna just about get away with that yes he is now i said he can't really go side by side for a turn one and that proves it that almost a monumental shot for the pair of them and luckily they get away with it and this is almost like a rodeo right now and we always mention this circuit is not built for GT cars. It really is right now proving it's too narrow for these cars. Right now, it's there as well. That's a bit of lag there. And that's caught Fogarty out straight away. And he will not be happy with that one. Vector there around the outside. Fogarty giving him absolutely no room at all. Almost saying, not going on the grass, my friend. Skulls put himself on the grass very clumsily behind there trying to find a way through. But already, the Fina and Papano, they are almost certainly out this race. So is Tinnis as well, nearly. That is the worst start you can have for someone on the first real opening that a crucially low gather and by Ratson out can try and pull away and the next car to him is wolf a stonking start for him he's ahead of jasmine behind them he's got one car in the wall that was um big kid daddy slapping the wall there another one in the background that's stole i think hitting the wall as well ethan there trying to close up on leonardo meanwhile that is a battle for six and seven that mercedes should blast past that land beginning down the straight and surely it will. There we go. Alongside, he's already ahead before we even get to the back of the corner. And now he's miles ahead. That Mercedes flying like a missile down the straight. Backwards we go, though. We've got three abreast. Oh, my God. Vector in the middle. Fogarty up the inside. There's another car. That's always going to end in contact. And for poor old um, big kid daddy, he was always going to get caught on that. And Skulls might just try and pick up one or two positions out of that one. He's got Fogarty on the outside. Fogarty will not lift though, they'll be contact again if I'm not careful. Skulls force wide, and this jet is getting a little bit clumsy down the back indeed right now in a circuit that is very demanding and very dangerous to try and overtake on. Yeah, indeed, the tracks are very narrow, so it is hard to overtake, and they just got to take some risks, and some of these guys, the risks are working, and for some of these guys, the risks are not, and uh, the ones that were in danger was our race winner from last week, our championship leader, Papano and uh, I was speaking to the drivers earlier on and a lot of people were saying these two races due to the fact that it's the format and also the track as well could really shake up the championship um, a lot and uh, that's what we like to see obviously as uh, commentators and spectators but drivers they want to go as high up in the grid as they possibly can so Papano's not going to like that but Boy Raxa and Gaza they're going to like that whatsoever it's going to help them in the team's championship and it's going to help them in the drivers championship as well, Tinnis is starting to make some ground at the moment. He's down in 13, but I'm sure he can uh, make up his way. Meanwhile, his teammate Jazzman is uh, picking up the pieces a little bit. Jazzman obviously retired last week due to some issues, but uh, he's hopefully, hopefully going to score some points this week. He is looking good at the moment, and uh, he's not going to get his nose in yet until he knows it's safe. In 
indeed. Well, Wolf so far doing a beautiful job. He's covering off Jazzman right now. And Jazzman is already looking at the back of him right now. Around the outside, he'll try and go into the last corner. That'll be brave around the outside because it's very easy. Wolf, I think, might have just locked a little bit too deep into the corner. He got away with it just about there. Behind low, Jasko sitting there, looking forward, looking for the car ahead. And then a big gap downwards. That's to Ethan and Leonardo. Then we got Vettri, who's doing a good job in A. Oh, so I say that. And he goes him. off the road exactly when I was about to say he's doing well in A. He's in the wall and off he goes down to 10. And that's going to be a pit lane for him because that's got damage. And as per usual, Jess, whenever I save someone's doing well, they seem to go off, don't they? Yeah, you do. We, we, we don't trust you either. Well, to be fair, in AOR, sometimes I do that. So it's probably just a you and me thing. They don't trust in the commentary box either. But uh, anyway, not going to say much more about drivers doing well, because otherwise we'll get uh, uh, moments like Vetro did earlier on. So, so let's have a look at our race order then. Gaza, six tenths uh, clear of uh, Boy Raxa down in front. Still running in tandem at the moment and still looking quite good at the moment as the track is starting to brighten up a little bit and sunny at the moment. Wolf in third place. And then we have got, I think it's Jazzman in fourth and then Jaska in fifth. And we've got uh, Ethan in sixth place, Leonardo in seventh. We're, that's where we're starting to see the gap starting to increase a little bit with battles not really happening towards the back. So I think mainly we're going to focus between the top six drivers as uh, those guys are probably going to be the ones who may still be in this fight. Indeed, meanwhile, behind them there is Jasko, he's at the wall there as well, and that looks very difficult. Well, that corner, might I say, is very difficult. I think that's turn nine, if I'm not mistaken, they're going off. So, um, it's yep. tricky. That curb, you get too wide, you go on the curb, you're in the barrier. He might have got away with that one that time, though, of course, because it was a glancing blow, and we saw what happened earlier on with your cars. They all uh, spun around, and look at, Jess, look at the gap down the back as well. It's already proving. This is going to be a race of nutrition and attrition as well, might I add. Um, unless you're eating cake, which I might be doing later on. Who knows? It's my birthday, after all. So, um, meanwhile, Gaza and Byraxter. Now, I'm wondering, is Byraxter going to have a look here down towards Tunnel 1? It'd be very silly if he would do so on his teammate. They'll end up taking each other off. I think surely he won't try and make a move here. He's no, he's no smart in this. And, yeah, he's definitely going to back off that one. A little bit too far back for that. It's another attempt. In normal circumstances, I'd say go for it in this circuit. It's not really the overtake you want to be doing here, unless you're full commitment. And really, it's only going to be that penultimate corner you can make an overtake, Jess, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. That's what I would have done anyway if I was in their situation. But uh, if, you, if you're confident you're going to make a move and do it well, you know who you're racing against, then go for it. Otherwise, just uh, keep it safe and uh, try and make sure you're matching the pace of the car behind. And uh, we are noticing that Leonardo is in the pits again for um, some damage and uh, he's not going to like that whatsoever though but he's going to get some fuel in the tank so we know he's going to make it to the end of the race also evil we've got to keep an eye on fuel especially in the uh, the feature race later on that's going to be a huge factor when it comes to their calculations will we hopefully we won't see an instant what happened with wolf uh, last week um, where he ran out of fuel but uh, uh, they should be fine about that hopefully they'll see the errors of their ways pretty soon as well. Looks like everyone is doing fine on their fuel right now. We've got about six laps, seven, seven laps to go of this, uh, of this uh, sprint race and uh, it's not over yet as the two leads are still close but you never know. If one of them spins, the guys up behind them could take advantage a bit but looks like they are leaving no room for error those two oh, and uh, they're doing well. Oh my word. Three. Boy Raxa is really Starting to put the pressure on Gaza, but Gaza, with the huge defence that he did, doesn't want uh, his teammate to uh, overtake him. So good job on Gaza there to hold on to that lead. I mean, Boy Rats is going to try for a move once again. It's going to be very too difficult. It is good. Yeah, he's too far back to do it at the moment. He's a few temps down on his previous best, but still matching the pace a little bit. So, yeah, you're probably right with the final corner being the one to overtake, but. Uh, yeah, those two seem to be doing well with overtakes at the moment. As uh, we've got people... Oh, oh Jasko! Uh, can he catch it? He's going round. He's going in the wall. Is he going to go in the wall? Just about clips it there. He must be careful there. Is Ethan going round the outside? Ooh. He must be careful he doesn't end up taking him out. And I think Ethan might have just had a brown pants moment there. And he will not enjoy that one. But now up to fifth. And that there was the rear end. Uh, downforce going. Maybe the car bottom out. Whatever happened, it did not go well. But right now... You know how you mentioned Mercedes might go and run away of this race? Well, right now, Mercedes 1, 2, and 3. 
But then again, Jazzman is just sitting behind. He's just laying there, waiting. He's a pouting tiger, of course, the man from Qatar. 29 years of age. And of course, one of the more established AOR drivers, one of the higher ranking members as well. Multiple different champions. And he's currently leading the endurance championship by a stonking while because he's won every race so far. We're in round four or five now as well. Of course, he's your two previous champions. Boy Rax, the last season's champion, Gaz up the season before. And the one before that would have been the Schmidt. And that, of course, would have been the car that Boy Rax was currently taking up. So that car, of course, has won the last four constructors championships in a row. And he's got a look slow to see. Is he going to have a look? Is he going to try and put up a defence on his teammate? Is he going to try and force a mistake? Well, he's the only place he's going to do it, Jess. He's going to be into that part of the corner. By the third last corner, might I say, because this is the last corner, so it's second last corner. But uh, never mind what I'm saying. But by Raxa, he's just a little bit too far back. And right now, you can see on board with, um, with him, you can see just how defensively Gaza is going. He's just moving his car slightly, just in the middle of the circuit, because he knows you can't come through there. There's no way you're going to slip run up the inside unless Gaza makes a mistake, of course. And we're not saying Gaza won't make a mistake. But he might make a mistake, and that can always happen. Though I normally say that, and someone else will immediately go off the road. And uh, let's hope nothing happens there. We've got one retirement. That's uh, Fogarty. Race. That's now, Fogarty. Fogarty. Out yet again, then. Second retirement in two races, and that is going to be surely not what he want to be looking for. I don't know what the issue is. Hopefully, he can resolve it next week. But it's not really what you want to be doing at the beginning of the season especially when you've got a championship fight to do it, it, it's it's a difficult situation of course it's a narrow circuit and of course you're going to mistakes and did you think it might have just caught him out jazz yeah i think it might have imagine what it's going to be like when the drivers go to um coach does your um quite some some time into the season and uh, for those of you that don't know it's actually monaco and monaco i would say is probably a lot worse in the gt3 cars than these but uh at um, least they're getting one of the worst tracks uh, for them out of the way and uh, they're trying to get a little bit of a feel, a little bit of a taster of what to expect in, uh, the, um, the, in Monte Carlo later on this season. As we're pretty much um, towards the end of this race, the home stretch for these guys with a few more laps to go with four laps. As this could be Boyvax's chance and he's got to make the move sooner or later. Is he going to try for the move? Oh, he almost did. Uh, but he's, Gaza, he's just he's just defending like crazy evil. Yeah, he's getting too far back. I mean, whoa, oh, Gazman! Oh, he spun the car. And I'm wondering, was that contact with Wall potentially? I'm not too sure. But I just noticed a car going round. And now that is Jazzman. And he's in the wall. And he's out of the race, I think. He's retired already. So whatever has gone on there, he is out. And I'm not sure if there was contact or not. But now he's now allowed. VSR third and fourth, and that now means Mercedes are one, two, three, and four. Behind them, Jasko in fifth, he's having his own issues. I might add Skulls doing an incredible job in the uh, shed right now in sixth. He's had a big kid down. The latest battle between Essa, Tillis down there in ninth, your championship leader, if I'm not mistaken, struggling behind one of the slower cars. He should be able to make a move here, and it'll be very brave if he does try and make a move here. He's going to have a look up the inside that there's not nearly enough room. He'll get past, and of course, Tinnis, he knows what he's doing, and Ooh. I think he's got the speed there to get through. He does. Essen, a very established driver, can decide promptly. He does not want to fire that one on the inside because he knows pretty well you can't go side by side if you turn one, unless you are very brave, I might I add. But now the battle is only going to be between Gaza and Boyraxo, and that is first and second position. Behind him there is Wolf, and then comes Ethan in fourth. And then we've got a bit of a gap down to Jaska, the first of Lamborghini drivers. And right now, we mentioned this might be one of nutrition and nutrition as well. So I keep saying nutrition today. I don't know. Maybe I'm hungry. But <laughs> nutrition, a race. And so far, by Raxa, three turns behind. Again, though, not close enough. He needs to be about two turns. He needs to be right with him, might I add. And right now, he's there. I don't think he's close enough to have a dive up the inside. He'll end up taking his teammate off. But uh, Gaza knows it. He moves ever so slightly before the breaking zone. I think Byraxa right now might just sit behind him for the time being. Just try and press him. Just play with him a little bit. I don't think he wants to try and launch one up the inside when they've got the constructors right now up for their uh, leading grabs. Especially if they've got two sets behind. They do not want to give a victory to the likes of Wolf and Ethan behind. Of course, you can see there is Gaza. He covers that inside line. He's just blocking that at all. There is no way anyone is going to possibly come through up the inside down. Unless, of course, 
something terrible happened, and uh, the terrible thing would normally be a one car spiraling into the barrier, but of course, Gaza, he knows what he's doing. By Raxa established, these two world championship drivers, these two top of their game, top of the season as per usual, we expect these drivers to uh, have the best relationship. Right now, they're just playing with each other there. Meanwhile, we've got Tiernet, he's having a little go on Big Kid Danny straight past him, you know, so that's the battle for 6th and 7th. I think Big Kid Danny must have had a big mistake there, because I'm not sure how he would have got caught that quickly, unless Tinnis is on a different planet right now, because he's fly. 154, he's playing and he's 154, it's not the quickest star skull pit lane. Now, damage. that's for damage, it is for damage. Do you know what? I said he was doing good earlier on, I'm going to stop saying people are doing Evil. good. So he grasses uh. there is Big Kid Danny off the road nearly. You know what? Essa might get a good result from this, actually. He's Evil. Going seven. Evil. Well, you said bad things to scold. You good things to scold. You said good things to Vetro, and look what happened. Well, that never mind then. Well, meanwhile, first <laughs> and second, still doing an okay job. Four times between those two on that nine of eleven. Only battle outs going on the circuit is Vetro closing up to Leonardo, then so the uh, Ferrari, clutching up to the back of the Lamborghini then. And, of course, two different engines, two different drivers, two very different cars. That is Pad versus Will right now. And Vetro, he's looking feisty right now, of course, as he uh, lights up rear tight just when I say he's looking feisty, of course. The Prancing Horse versus the Italian Stallion car. And of course, Vetro doesn't need to get past him because we believe that's a 10 second penalty for Leonardo because he sped in the pit lane earlier on. And that will be that uh i think even papano might have come out of leonardo so vetro right now he should be in nine position remember it's a top eight that is reverse so we're looking at essa potentially being on pole position from big kid daddy but again not really any opportunity to come through the inside there jess no definitely not i mean so some of these guys if they want to get a position if i was them i'll probably try it either on the penultimate lap or the final lap Essa's is going to try to make the move now but uh, Big Kid Daddy was pulling the same defensive moves to what uh, Gaza was doing uh, a few laps ago. So this kid means business. Uh, let's see what Ezra could do once we uh, he starts um, the next lap. As uh, It's going to be very tight around here. Ezra might try and look for it. Big Kid Daddy has left the door open. Right now he shut it. He shut it now. He shut the door open, Evil. He doesn't want um, Ezra to go past. And he's gone wide a little bit. That's probably given uh, Ezra racing the opportunity, but no, not quite. Just a little bit too further back to make the move. But you can see it at the front, Evil. The gap is just closing in quite massively uh, between Gaza and Boy Rat. So this is going to be a very d t intense finish between the two of them. I could just see it closing in um, sector by sector right now. I can't wait. He's really close, actually. Now he's got a mega exit at this last couple of I think he might have a little look at up the inside. He's got Leonardo, I think, uh, Duffino up the road. Is he going to stay put? Is he going to stay back? He was uh, zero temps there. He's under a temp behind him. He's going to stay back for the time being. He's got the corner. Like, he has just about got the corner. A bit wide for him. And again, you can see the car pulling out to the outside. But again, that is not going to be an opportunity around the outside here. He can't pass down this first couple of corners. So he will just sit back and get... He really needs poor old Gaza to make a mistake and bless him if he does he's done a flawless race these two drivers and if they end up in contact that means Wolf who is catching them by the way was just like, he's only uh, some under three seconds behind they're all setting very 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 familiar lap times by the way 53 0 53 0 and then a 53 2 Ethan setting a 53 3 and then Jasko setting a 53 0 as well so this top five all separated by under three tenths of a second per lap consistently is incredible and again, on board, we go with your drive, your championship, uh, real, your defending champion against your defending, defending champion. And again, no real opportunity to come through here. It's too narrow up this middle section because if you try and make a move, we saw it earlier on, you will end up in contact unless you are got a very, very good friend indeed to give you that room. And if they do, they're basically getting out of the way and saying, come through, my friend. Well, by wraps up, up top of the circuit, down towards the one of the well the two second to happen of the one well, of the two we've got so far might i say into this tricky little right hand where we've seen cars go off earlier on no mistakes there for these two drivers though then again a little bit wide for gaza and now let's see though if he gets a good exit through this corner if he keeps his slipstream he has to go for it if he wants to win this race he'll go for it but the question is is it team orders is he sitting back 
Let's find out because he's got to make it. So is he going to try it? And on the inside, oh. Gaza might have to cover it. And here we go then. Is Gaza going to cover it? Is Byraxa going to try it? Is he just going to sit back and have a little look? He is going to sit back then. So team orders are in fact then. I thought they might be because I don't think they want to take each other out. They're just sitting back. They're just playing the team game then. So unless something terrible happens in this last corner, Gaza will win this race and i would have loved it if these two battled it out but unfortunately they will not they're doing it for the champions that they're doing it so they don't end up taking each other out gaza comes across light he'll win the sprint race then onto the feature race will go gaza wins then here in roaring ahead of his teammate then a byraxa wolf finally gets a podium then after the shambles of last week even as well who's getting caught might i say by jasco as well will get a very fine and dandy fourth position as well out of that Behind him there, Jasko with the fastest lap of this race. So far, 152.8. Then we've got a big gap down to your championship leader. Who will not be a championship leader after this one. It's Tinnus. He had a rather disappointing mistake on the first lap. Couldn't get the car back going. Had damage. Had to make a stop. That's why he's so far down the field. He'll finish down in sixth position. Yes, sir. I mean, well, he did get seventh in the end of this. So, um... Oh, good. Me not fully cursing him was a good thing. So, Shed at least gets himself off... On to a good start. Big Kid Daddy Laird down in eighth. Leonardo and Vectros has got himself a penalty there, I think, as well. I'm wondering how big of a penalty that is. Two seconds. So uh, he will finish down in 10 position either way. Is Papanet having a look at the inside there? Running very low on the fuel, might I say. He doesn't care if he doesn't throw himself off the circuit there. He really wants to get past Vectro right before the line. Vectro should just about hold that one. Indeed, he will. Around the outside, he tries, but he comes out the line. And he'll just about hold that one there. But Vetro down in turn. Leonardo in 11 for that penalty. Raining on Skold and Daffino, who is the last driver to cross the line. Skold, he will finish down in 12th position. He's going to be disappointed after that mistake earlier on. And Daffino through the last corner. He will be all but last. Par the two that retired. Of course, that of Jazzman and Mr. C. Fogarty as well. And Daffino. Well, he can just weave this car. He can warm the tyres up a little bit as he comes through the last corner. He did an OK job, of course, and not the result he would have hoped for down last place. He made that mistake on the first lap, and across the line he will come, and well. So there we go, then. That's everyone that's finished, and I've just had confirmation, Evil, that uh, Wolf and... Uh... Uh, Jazzman did have contact earlier on in the race, and that's why uh, Jazzman has retired, sadly. So that was very unfortunate. So uh, they did have a come in together due to damage. But let's have a look at the uh, race order. We have got uh, Gaza in first place, Boyraxa in second, and we got the two VSR boys in third and fourth. So it's Mercedes, one, two, three, four, right now. Then we got Jasko in fifth, Tinnus, sixth, Ezra, seventh, Big Kid Daddy, seventh, eighth, Papano, ninth. Vetro 10th, Leonardo 11th, Skold 12th, Dufino 13th, and your two of time, Jazzman and Fogarty. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the reason why Fogarty retired was his brake pedal has been playing up as well. So uh, ah. he is uh, having issues with his brake pedal. So hopefully it gets fixed for in time for the race, the feature race, which is a 40-minute uh, race, of course, where uh, the top eight will get reversed. But uh, he'll be starting in last place. And uh, we will have a five-minute... Um, well, the drivers will be having a five-minute interlude whilst uh, um, the host and Jazzman set up the lobby for the next race. So, uh, this is going to be a new experience for these GT3 drivers. I wonder how they're going to handle it, Evil. Indeed. Well, we'll have to find out, of course. Anything can happen in a 40-minute reverse. Top uh, eight as well. Will there be carnage like there was as well? Remember, it is a rolling start. So... You're always going to look out for the drivers making mistakes. And then again, we've got to look at it. It's going to be very difficult to get themselves into position. Tight, narrow, reverse grid. Most luckily, it's only the top eight. It's not the entire grid order because otherwise I feel that might be a lot of carnage. But we saw, though, how big of a gap some of the drivers there is. Vector is uh, left the session there for whatever reason. I think maybe just two eight can... Uh, Get rid of some saved data so we can save the replay. As uh, Jazzman has disconnected from the server there. And uh, I've disconnected as well. But there. Uh... Ah. Everyone's disconnecting. I I've just seen Evil Dragon, dis you disconnect, Jazzman disconnect. 
Hopefully we'll have, won't have a ma mass disconnect evil. That that will just be really bad. I mean, you know. But anyway, so uh, as it stands in the championship in terms of the teams, looks like Gazza and Raxa Racing are leading the team standings after their 1-2 um, in this race. I'm not sure who's in second, though, because obviously we've got Pano who scored quite low down. Obviously, Big Kid Daddy as well who is also his teammate he is um he was in i think seven so I, I don't know it could be close between the team standings more than the drivers i think but uh we'll have to uh, wait and see on that one as uh, uh we just screen conf get given confirmation that we are going to stay in this lobby and uh oh do you need oh i don't think i can invite you evil unless i can uh uh i, I don't know how i can invite you <laughs> at the moment but uh, hopefully you, uh, you you can be invited let us know yeah, in the Vectory's chat got... pardon sorry uh, my good old friend vector has got me covered i think there's he sent me an invite so he's got me back in so i invite him back to uh the party that i'm in it's because uh so they can talk to the other two drivers that are in that chat but then again well it's good like i can spy on what the drivers are doing sometimes as well whilst i uh, get back in the That is good, isn't it? You're kind of like a Jeff, but kind of not like a Jeff. I don't know what... Uh, you're like a... You're a pit lane reporter, that's it. Uh, Ted Kravitz. I'm being a Ted for a temporary reason there. Well, meanwhile, let's see what they can do, as uh, I'm going to quickly grab myself a drink. Okay, whilst you do that, I'll just have a quick rundown of what's been going to go on for the 40-minute session then. Now, this is going to happen... Um, for the remainder of this race then obviously um, the Ezra will be starting on pole position followed by Big Kid Daddy and uh, everyone else from ninth downwards though they will be starting obviously from where they finish but the top eight will be reversed down there and uh, the AOR rolling start that you've been seeing last week you'll be seeing that in the uh, feature race the feature race will be 23 racing laps so uh, almost double to what it was um well it is pretty much double because obviously the sprint race was uh, 20 minutes and the feature race is about 40 minutes so they had to work out how many laps they were uh, going to do right now so uh yeah it should be interesting there now interestingly to see that the same that the two drivers that retired last week were the same drivers that retired this week but um not for different reasons though but i'm, I'm always noticing that uh, Fogger, uh, Fogarty is having some technical issues as of late but i just you know it's going to be hard to get it fixed even if he does because obviously if you send it to get it repaired we don't know what the situation would be due to the coronavirus outbreak so you know i um, mean probably has to uh um stick to it at the moment so uh we'll just have to find out that one but kind of like uh, technical issues is kind of like uh, engine issues in real life and i can't i can't remember if mechanical uh, damage is on as well i can't remember but uh um i don't think it is but actually no it might be but it's kind of disconnect is kind of like um reliability issue really uh, for the drivers so uh, hopefully we won't get that uh today and um this is also a chance for the drivers to uh, as well as evil get a cup of t a tea or drink or whatever as if they have teammates speak to their team find out uh, what went well what went wrong in the race ahead to uh, what well, the race just gone and see what they can improve for the next race because the next race is going to be excuse me the race is come ahead it's going to be a little bit more testing because obviously you go and make less mistakes but you have more of a chance to get back in it if you got damaged there is no mandatory pit stop like uh, was in the last race as well so uh, if there's no pit stops uh, if if they don't have to make any pit stops then they got to keep damage to a minimum but again it's very hard on the circuit but surely the ones that have had damage in the first race they're probably going to uh, tone it down a bit for the next race and they know they, they know what to do to improve for the next race the next race fingers crossed because they know what to experience but they did um, experience a practice race last night but Obviously, they had a feeling of what the lobby was going to be like today as well. So maybe this race will be a little bit more settled, but we don't know. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, the birthday boy is back, I believe, aren't you, Evil? Yes, I've just disconnected yet again from the server. Ah. Um, 
Um, I'm, see, I, can't, I just can't get into it right now. It's, I, I think Jazzman might have um, broken it slightly. Yeah, because he left as well, I think. Yeah, he was the one that invited us. So yeah, because if if evil can't join, I'm I'm not going. We're not gonna have him. Um, all I'm just gonna see is what follow one driver and not gonna follow anything else really, which is not gonna be helpful. But I think these are the lobbies where if, if there's no director, then the lobby can't start. So uh, um, evil will have to join sooner or later. So um, we're in the process of getting that sorted for you soon. I don't think I can invite you because I'm not in any uh, party no. or anything. So. Uh, uh, Ethan's inviting me there, so uh, thank you to him. That's good. That is good. Is Jazz... Oh, I think Jazzman is in the lobby as well, isn't he? Uh, no, Jazzman has retired from the evening. He is not happy, and fortunately, it seems to have taken me with him for some reason, because I can't get into the server. Um... Yeah. I don't know what's happened there. We seem to always have technical issues at some bit of the season for PS4 uh, I al and it always has to happen at round 2 so we might have to have a lobby restart to get the likes of Evil and possibly uh, Fogarty in as well because I don't think Fogarty's in either um, oh no I do not want actually I can invite um, oh, let me see I, I, I can actually invite you Evil so I'll try and send you a spare invite so I can uh, get, I didn't know that I could invite you but I can invite you so I will do that for you I'll actually send you a few invites actually and I forgot there we go um, I forgot how I actually invited you aha there we go so I'll just press a random button on the PS4 and it just comes up really so yeah I'll send you another backup invite as well there we go so two invites sent for you evil and uh, we should be getting started shortly uh, evil and hopefully no internet issues but if we see a disconnect from either one of us then you'll know why <laughs> so are you in evil yeah I i'm here good good that is good to see and it seems like you're keen to get this race underway i'm sure I think, oh, do we have everyone? We've got one, two, three, uh, four, five. Yeah, we're missing... We're missing Jazzman B's retirement for the night. So we've got one, two, three, uh, four, five. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, oh there's Vatra. Oh, he's got back in then. So yeah. Vatra, that's the one you were missing. And Fogarty, I think, is the other one. And um, Fogarty's here. So, yeah, we may have one driver missing. It wasn't me because one did show up. I'm not sure who that is, unfortunately. But let, me look, let me look at the standings. It's probably... <laughs> Um, I think it's Jazzman's teammate. Uh, that's Tinnis. Oh, no, that's not Tinnis. Uh, Andy, that's it. Andy's not here tonight. Andy's not and here. You, uh, is not here. We are. I do apologise, by the way, for technical issues. Sometimes they can happen, unfortunately. And uh, as sad as it is, that is the facts of servers. Especially due to the coronavirus. Yeah, they are being overloaded, unfortunately. And, uh... Uh, I must say, and stay I, safe. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and stay home. Honestly, it, it, honestly, if, you, if your country is la locked down, then please stay at home. Just please, you're gonna help the healthcare system so much. And if you are staying at home throughout this and just getting your exercise, then you're helping so much. And uh, we're all gonna get through this together. And esports is definitely uh, helping us get through it. So uh, good on esports, Evil. Am I right? Evil. Indeed, is your mic uh, just blipped out on my uh, end temporarily there? But um, you are bleeding back right now. But so, oh, Jazzman is not racing, we are uh, believing after that mistake there. So, uh, I haven't seen it, unfortunately. So, I don't know exactly what was the cause of it. Because we now just wait a little bit while we until we find out when the race is going. So, we have been given the. Um, a rundown then of the grid and the order as it stands Bikidari Esa Tinas Jasco VSR Rotary VSR Wolf 
then we've got Byraxa, then we've got Gaza, Papano, Vetra, Leonardo, Skull, Defino, and then Fogarty down that back. Of course, one driver, well, two drivers now missing. We are now missing, unfortunately, Andy. And then we are also missing the likes of Mr. Andy as well, who did unfortunately for uh, whatever reason could not show up today. But um, uh, as, as harsh as it can sound, though, uh, for Jasmine, he practiced for, for a lot of time for, for just for one mistake. And when you make a mistake like that, you um, as unfortunate as it is, and I'm not in a position to say it, but you just don't quit. You've, you've got to keep trying it. You've got to keep pushing. Even if someone has a mistake, it's another race to come. You can still get points out of it. Uh, it wasn't the end of the world. They just got to move on, and suppose, unfortunately, for Jazz Manor, well, because we don't know what exactly was the incident, we only saw the end of it, Jazz, and hopefully he can get back in for next race after this one. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed about that one. And yes, I do agree. Um, because obviously tennis had a, a moment um, at the start of the race, but uh, he didn't uh, uh, quit. He just continued and he still got some uh, decent points out of it, which was very great to see. So he uh, he was uh, a comeback driver, I would say. Probably not a position he would have liked, but still that's going to help in the team's uh, uh, helping out his teammate anyway. So uh, just fair play to tennis for uh, keeping his dream alive and obviously he's a champion he doesn't want to just quit for no reason and uh, um, he just wants to keep going because the more you're on the track the more you're actually going to improve you're going to think right what am I going to do to uh, approach the corner better maybe or battle better or something like that so we'll have to find out on that one as obviously we're, we are just about to load into the session which is good news and yes we are that is great to see all 15, 14 cars in on the grid then obviously they're not in the order that they're going to be um uh racing in to start their formation lap so they're gonna let the cars aside and obviously um essa will be starting on pole so they'll be letting him through and he'll be leading the field away and it'll be just like what you seen last week at the start of the race in catalonia where they'll be going in a uh, single file formation for a little bit then a two by two formation and then Obviously, when they get to the acceleration point, that's when they can really floor it. But I haven't asked you much about this evil, but who would you say is favourite to uh, possibly take victory? Ah, now, this is going to be the super... I don't know who's going to be... I mean, you've got to look, Gaz is only there in fifth. Uh, so he's... Well, well, he'll be starting down in eighth. Um... So it's always going to be a possibility for him to come back through and win this race. It's not going to be the question, though, if can he win? It's will he not crash? It's going to be the more important question, of course, because it's narrow, it's tight, twisty, technical. Anything can happen. And it usually does happen around the circuit. Remember, they will not need to pit in this race. They should fill their cars up perfectly. Of course, they will only pit if they all get damaged. And let's hope there is no incident there. Up skull front gets a little bit of clean air in front of him for uh, what is going to be a back point one of a second. Because as soon as the lights go off, he'll have to slot himself back down the back of the grid. Yep, exactly. And it's just a few more moments before we can get underway again. And uh, right on cue, there we go. So the drivers are going to ignore the five lights. They're going to wait for five seconds. And let's see if everyone is going to follow on cue. There might be a few people that forget it. Here we go. Those are green lights. Only oh, another did. Uh, but they're, they're, then they're, they're moving out the way, way, Evil. They're moving out the way. It is quite hard to move out the way straight away. So we're already seeing the people that are going to be starting lower down already making that way through. As Big Kid Daddy is almost in position. Um, he's just waiting for Esther to get past. So he's just going to wait just a little bit there i don't know where s is gone um he, he, yep yeah, he's climbing his way up that is good that is good there's his teammate scold in the grass there but uh there we go so uh everyone's starting to make uh their way past and yeah i think for most part we are in formation for the top three and uh i think defino is meant to be no he's not meant to be starting last there's a uh, fog obviously retired last race so uh he'll be starting last but uh yeah it is starting, it is a bit more hazier than yes. um, obviously um, the last race. So very different conditions, very different types of racing we're going to see due to the fact that the visibility has been decreased a little bit. So 
a lot more to watch out for. Breaking zones will probably, um, the seconds that they need to break will be increased a little bit. So uh, definitely a lot to watch out for in this race, Evil, due to those changing conditions. Yeah, this is the conditions that a lot of the drivers have been practicing in. And uh, talking to Lewis, he was um, incredibly quick, actually, he was practicing in these types of conditions. So hopefully for him, he can really come through this field. But he's starting down there in 12th, Jess. It's not where you want to be starting because you're behind the top group. And really, Essa right now, he's the one if Skull's doing really well in the Jeanette in this type of conditions, Essa could have a real chance because Daddy was under pressure, remember, from Essa last race. And in fact, I, I, I was pretty certain I almost got past him and unfortunately made a mistake right at the end. Then we got Tinnis. And I think Tinnis here is a, got, without question, is going to be the man who, if. If unless something goes wrong, will win this race because he's been quick. He was almost leading the race earlier on before that car has happened on, and now he can only try and come back through. As long as he ends up spinning himself on those curves. Of course, then he got back. We got Rear Wolf and Ethan in the reverse order of what I just said. Byraxa, Gaza, Papano, Vectra, Leonardo. Then we got Skold, Dafino. And then Carl Fogarty, not based on the motorbike driver at all. I don't know what you're on about that, but he is now just forever known as Carl Fogarty to me, even though I'm pretty certain his name isn't Carl Fogarty. Well, huh? let's get ready for those two by twos then. Noah's art formations, I always used to call it. And Vicky Daddy, um, who knows what happened after this race, of course. Jazzman, will he return next week? We hope so. Uh, never say never. Yeah, you will often need to say that. We hope he doesn't retire, there. Evil. Yeah, we definitely do not want anyone to retire, especially when you're the card. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But let's see. Will this go well? Will this turn into shambles? We've got 14 drivers. We're missing one more. We're technically missing two than we started. We're meant to start with, but we're down to 14. That's okay. We've still got more than uh, needed to make this an entertaining little race. So, Big Daddy on the right, Essa on the left, Tinnis. Then comes Jasko. Then comes the two Mercedes, then then comes the other two Mercedes, then comes Papano and Vetra. The top ten rounded off by Vetra. Let's get ready to go then, Jess, here for round two then. The second race of the second attempt. Will it be their third Grand Prix and will it be their last? Because we are underway then. It's a start immediately from Big Kid Daddy. Good start from Tinnis. Bad start from Essen then. Is it gone through turn one? Is it clean though through turn one? The last lap It's going to be just about a resounding guess. And no mistakes down the back. Everyone clean as a whistle then. They go through turn two then. Down they come towards the hairpin. And crucially though, Big Kitty Daddy, Big Kid Daddy is leading this group away then from tennis. Then comes Essa, then comes Jasko, then comes those four Mercedes then. But no one making a mistake uh, just at the beginning of this race. Just like uh, last race and then we saw mistakes pretty much a few moments on as always. Always starting to see uh, a bit of people going for very risky moves as Vetro has been caught up by... Uh, Tofino, uh, no, well, Leonardo, not uh, Tofino. Tofino is right at the back almost with uh, Fogarty. But uh, yeah, Vetro is one of those guys that just wants to get moves done early on in the race. But these guys have got to forget this race is longer than the first race. They can't take too much risk. The race is not over in the first lap. So they just got to wait just a little bit. But uh, most of these guys are coping quite well as well. As we've got Gaza who is uh, uh, still in eighth place right now. So I guess he's going to keep out of trouble for just a little bit while longer. He doesn't want to go for aggressive moves as of yet. Still got some good points in the first race. So if he doesn't get that amount of points in this race, it won't be too bad for him. But I'm surely he wants to get some points this race, as do most of these drivers. And for some of these guys, Evil, it is redemption really, isn't it? Some of these guys need to have a good race here. Yeah, they very much do. Meanwhile, Ethan, I think, was having a little look there, or is Jasko having a little look now on Essa? Uh, well, he was having a look at Essa. Ethan was uh, looking... You know, pulled back. But look at the top two. Tinnis already now trying to challenge down Big Kid Daddy. We know Tinnis has got a lot less downforce than Big Kid Daddy. So, in terms of straight line speed, what Big Kid Daddy really needs to do right now for the next 40 minutes or the next 20 feet laps is just cover the inside line, just not allow any opportunity for him to come through. If you do that, you're not coming through. Jasko, meanwhile, I thought for a second, might have been having a look up the inside of Essa. As then comes this line of Mercedes then. Gazza will drop back left from uh, the likes of Byraxa there. So he's dropped back ever so slightly. So whatever's going on there. Down the pit back, meanwhile, we've got Vectro in the pit lane then for damage yet again then. So whatever's happened down the back, we're not too 
certain there because we were looking at the front group. But Essa, third position, he's behind Tinas. And then we have got that battle between Jasko. Then comes the four Mercedes drivers now being joined by Pana, who just got punted, I think, by Leonardo slightly there. And that car definitely jolted very suddenly from Pana. No damage, I think, would have been done to him. Behind there, stole in 11th. And already, we mentioned it, Jess. This can immediately become very processional. The gaps will definitely fold out. But behind them, they're all just stuck behind Essa right now. He's rather the caught in the bottle. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, it's is doing well to keep those cars behind, but if he doesn't get a move on, then uh, the people behind aren't going to take advantage. And uh, to be honest, Jasko will need to make the move done, possibly at the Panorama corner, not probably before. But uh, due to the fact that the Mercedes have good, bad, straight line speed, then the Ginetta. Sure got him. Here, Here we go. Goes. There goes Jasko around the outside on board. Even this would be a nice on board. You know what? I think even really wants to have a come and look. Oh, it's free wide. Okay. It won't be free wide just about because that Lamborghini's got legs, of course. But the cork in the bottle's been popped. And now here goes Ethan there. A little look up the inside. Just going a little bit skatey there. Ethan managed to get the car stopped, like, up the inside of the Ginetta. Up front, meanwhile, Big Kid Daddy now under pressure and passed by your uh, championship leader. Or was to be championship leader. Maybe he'll still be champion leader after this one. There goes Tim's into the lead of this race. And Big Kid Daddy in second. Just going now ahead of Ethan in third, fourth. S has now dropped down to down to seven. So I mentioned the cork in the bottle, and the bottle's been broken, shattered on the floor, and glass has flown everywhere because it's going downhill very suddenly. He's dropped one, two, three, four positions in the space of what? One corner. As in comes Leonardo into the pit lane for damage, we believe. Yep, I think so. But quite a, a quick pit stop from Leonardo, so he can get back into this race pretty quickly as well. I think Vector is the other guy that obviously pitted earlier. Everybody else. It hasn't yet to pit, obviously, because they don't need to pit, because for those of you that just joined us, for these type of races, um, which is going to be happening uh, tonight, obviously, at Ruin Les Isar, which is the track we are, are currently, and also um, in uh, the Nürburgring, which is going to happen um, on the 29th of April, is where we're going to see most of these guys really going to full fruition, and they don't have to make any pit stops, so... Um, that is why that they've got to keep their fuel in fuel check because most of these guys I think have put a double the amount of fuel they would have intended to anyway and you can see the top three are really starting to uh, uh, bring it home to be honest as uh, so we can see Jasko is really starting to uh, pull away from the VSR boys indeed we get this incredible shot here meanwhile Gazza I might just mention now behind uh, Essa well he's not going to be for long because he's now pulling alongside and now he's pulling ahead. You know what? I think Papano might have a look as well. Let's see. Is Papano going on the inside on the brakes? He is. Is he going to go and get that car stopped? There is a question. Just about. Is Essa going to be able to cut back? No, he's not. That's incredible. Good braking there from the Lamborghini. It just looks to me right now that the poor old shed just... It's so light. It just stops too quickly. And they're, they're, they're catching each other out for some reason. Because Essa and Skull dropping down the foot. And I do think they might be changing cars sooner or later. Because that is... Their pace is just not there. Vetra, unfortunately, damage. We don't know what his pace in the Ferrari would be. Uh, Fogarty, meanwhile, with a lot of damage. I'm seeing, is that a pit lane for him? Or is that, yeah, that's going to be damage for a pit stop, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it Let's looks see. like it. Is he coming in? He is coming in then for damage. And that is the second time he's got damage in a short amount of time. And unfortunately for him, that isn't what he wants to be doing yet again. We believe his steering wheel uh, of pedals, what you said, Bra was Brake pedals. So having balance. a BBY failure potentially. Skull in 10th position behind that Defino in 11th. Big gap meanwhile up front. We've got now Ethan, Wolf, Gaza, Papano, Essa, Skull, Defino, and then that is down to there. So it's fourth down to 11th, all separated by what? Five seconds? Oh my word. They're quite close indeed, to be honest. And uh, it's time to get a bit more perfect. Uh, Professional, processional. Ah, oh, getting my words wrong tonight, Yvonne. I don't like it. But anyway, uh, Ethan is leading that train ahead of his uh, uh, teammate, uh, Wolfman. Obviously, um, two VSR boys doing well in the last race. Hopefully, they're going to continue that. This race is uh, Wolfman is being challenged by uh, Boyraxa behind, but uh, as we know from last season and obviously from the last race, Boyraxa. Is a quick little puppy as he's got some great straight line speed going towards that penultimate corner. He's going to try and have a look around the inside. There he goes. 
Actually, no, he doesn't go around the inside. There's a uh, Wolfman defends to the inside. I don't think Boy Bats is going to have a go. Meanwhile, we've got Big Kid Daddy and Jasko um, running in tandem for position. Looking quite good, the pair of them, at the moment, as Jasko's going to try and get for a move at the start, finish straight. It's going to be risky if they do it, because it's going to be narrow. Oh, a little bit squirmy. He's, right. he's going to be on the grass. He is on the grass. And Big Kid Daddy, teammate, no favors in the background That as a... Uh, Luckily, doesn't end up going backwards there. If they were side by side there, I think Jasko might be having a few bad words to say that to yeah. Big Kid Daddy if they had contact there. Luckily, they managed to get away with that one. Rotary there ahead of Wolf. Virax is still having it. Oh, look, he wants to get past. Defino as oh, Defino off the circuit. Where's Papano gone? I'm running. Ah, there's where Papano's gone. Off the road, might I add that. Is now, oh, Defino getting himself all caught up in the Ginettas there. And he must be careful instead of hitting one of the genetics. They go and try around the outside. You'll be squeezed off, my friend, there. Happy brave around the outside. Can he do it? No, he can't quite do it. That's so optimistic. Not quite going to work there, unfortunately. He tried to get alongside, just couldn't get the grip into the corner. We are on that 6 of 23. That meaning uh, somewhat uh, 16 and a bit laps to go give or take a few minor dinks in the telemonetary. But Ethan, Wolf, Boyrax, and Gazza. That is the battle there for 4, 5, 6, 7. Tinnis right now running away with the ring. So far, he's got a four-second lead. And it's very much a man on a mission. Big Kid Daddy ahead of Jasko as well. Those two drivers, the two teammates. And I think right now, Big Kid Daddy ought to be trying to get himself out of the way of Jasko. Jasko going almost a second a lap quicker than him. Yeah, I mean, the ones... Jas to be honest, Jasko has impressed me so far this season he didn't have a uh, not a bad race uh, la uh, last time um, in the sprint race obviously and he's doing pretty well in the feature race he's keeping it clean he's keeping his nose clean and he's helping big kid daddy as well and uh, trying to uh, go for moves when he sees their space I mean he got see he did have a really he's having a little look at the inside he's being pesky there as a little look for the inside just to wrap no. So his nose. Meanwhile, Boyrax has got Wolf. Wolf will have to back oh. off here. Won't go inside there. He has to back off. He does back off then. Boyrax has let a good move up the inside. Wolf has to force himself out of a move. And that is one of the few ways you make a move for turn one then there. Jess, you have to really be alongside and more than just alongside, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, turn one, if you go for a move, you really got to commit. And um, these guys did commit there. And Boyrax just goes to show how speedy he is into turn one. I think Boy Rax is one of those people if he make a move through turn one um, he makes it work. So uh, Boy Rax another one to watch out for in this race if he keeps it up. So far no penalties given to the drivers so they're understanding the track a bit more. They're understanding the rhythm of the track a bit more and speaking of that Wolf has gone into the grass so probably we might get a penalty soon. I probably just jinxed that there and uh, uh, as, as you were saying about commentators curses I just probably jinxed Wolf there as yep. well. <laughs> Looking there, we've got one driver out of this race. I'm trying to figure out who that is down the back. Is that is Papana? Yeah, it's Papana who's out of this race there. So uh, he was the one who's spiking backwards down through turn two and three, and he is now retired from the server. So uh, I'm forcing to see now the 13 drivers right now by Rapsa having a look at Ethan. If I was Ethan right now, is it worth fighting him? Let's see down the straight. He's, I think he's got alongside him already. And let's see, does he manage to get the car stopped? Ethan, we know, is very brave. Wolf might have a look up the inside actually as well. And Wolf actually gets his teammate right now, but he wants too deep. Oh. And these two drivers, they do not want to come to blows. The VSR drivers then side side. This is the last corner. Wolf on the outside, Ethan on the inside. Wolf backs out of it there. They've got, I believe, pure um, conversation between the two drivers. They're dead. So they're not they're yeah. giving it their all aren't they i mean wolf is trying his best i mean surely oh, wolf oh wolf, wolf, wolf was uh getting a bit close there and uh, that almost would have ended in the shunt but luckily it did and as ethan went into the grass there he made a mistake as well so maybe the setup may not be designed well for the long races but uh that's gonna allow wolf to catch up again and you can see who's behind as well very very crucial it's gaza who is behind um, the two BSR boys, and obviously he they, he won the last race, so a major threat for the two of them right now. So I hope that these guys could uh, try and uh, stay clear of uh, Gaza soon, because otherwise uh, they are going to be in trouble then. As uh, Fetcher not having a good race either, he's down in 13th right now, but 
he is uh, still going and um, still going to uh, go strong. So the more he races, the more he improves. So uh, I'm guessing he's going to learn quite a lot uh, from these two races, I, I, I would have think. So I'm guessing he's just tinkering with his setup a little bit. Yeah, he's trying. Meanwhile, the only real battle going on is this one for uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh. I'm currently listening into our uh, radio conversations right now, which is uh, sneaky of me. So, who, uh, hopefully, you can't, um, no, it's not picking it up on the stream at all. But um, no, it's not because I'm not in it. Yes, so I'm just mm -hmm. listening, <laughs> listening closely to what they're saying, and I'm enjoying it right now. As uh, I think trying to get past Ethan right now, I think he's got quicker pace. really getting and I think he's getting a bit frustrated right now behind Ethan he's quicker it seems he's uh, taking the 10 for 2 out and now Gaza really looking at him that is Gaza close enough now he's a little too far back right now but there's Mercedes starting to struggle in this race and again it's a switch completely from last race just because it was um, Mercedes winning last race now it's Lamborghini 1 2 3 this time ah so maybe our predictions of Mercedes being the fastest car around here may be not too uh prominent but maybe it might be due to the conditions I don't know maybe the Lambo is suited to these uh, hazy conditions more than the Mercedes I don't know or maybe they're they're a bit more comfortable oh. on the track and oh, there's oh, Wolf oh. there's Wolf that's got damage that has hurt him Bloody quite yeah. a lot been... four arrow damage right here in that Wolf so not too bad damage then that so uh sneaky boy listening into the radio conversation he's got dirty air behind Ethan dropped the car then on the curb we saw the rear one stepping out So that is not good for Wolf whatsoever. So I assume Evil, they'll be going into the pits, won't they? No, oh, I don't think so. Oh. Oh, they're just going to run. Oh, okay. They're still managing to keep it together, but they got Gaza catching up soon as well. So they're going to lose so much time if Wolf pits. So I'm guessing they will be staying out due to that. But, you know, I'm guessing they still will get good points at the end of the day. So uh, as long as the other guys behind don't catch up, they should be fine. Indeed. Well, let's find out, of course, later on, but right now, Gaza doing an okay job right now, trying to close up to the back of Wolf, and let's see if he can come through. He is looking very speedy right now, going towards Panama Corner Evil. He's going to try and go for the lunge, doesn't quite do it at this stage, a bit... Um, Portion at the moment. We've got Ethan as well covering his teammates. Good team uh, work from the VSR boys to keep Gaza behind. But how long uh, is is Ethan going to keep uh, Wolf um, in tandem? I don't know. But Gaza's going to possibly try for the lunch here, maybe. No, nope, he's yeah, not. Comes in. Moves it slightly louder. Those two are working together there just to keep each other as much toe as possible. Ethan very much on the curb there. I think got away of it though. Yes, he did. Jasko, meanwhile, still closing up to Big Kid Daddy. Those two battling away for lapses. And further down the field, we've got Skull trying to close up to Essa in the battle between the two sheds. And uh, one shed a little bit wide there, and the other shed trying to come through. Let's see around the outside. And Skull uh, around the outside there as Essa decides to back off of that one. And what we go then? Again, with the driver of Gaza. Stop behind the man from Essex. And then the man from up and very close to us in the old Swindon man in the of Ethan. So those two drivers, both teammates, both very good friends, both 18, 19 years old, nearly 20, I think, for one or two of them. But um, I'm not too certain exactly of their age sometimes. <laughs> but neither of mine, my uh, brain for getting ages. Gaz up. He's sitting back. He's just relaxing. He's wanting to come through. He's got the pace right now, but he's just staying back. He's just mining his time he doesn't seem to have very much a lot of downforce jets right now does he nope he doesn't i, I thought um gaza was going to breeze past wolfman like no tomorrow but uh looking at uh, how gaza, gaza is controlling the car he's not so i'm guessing wolf did the right thing for staying out and that's really going to help him and uh, you know we did see gaza and boy racks are working together as teams earlier on and uh, we're seeing exactly the same thing between the two VSR boys, but uh, a bit more closely this time, helping each other out in times of need. But that the one disadvantage Ethan will have that though is he's not able to catch to a uh, boy Raxa. But uh, the main focus, I think, for them, was they want to they want to get some good points in the constructs more than anything. So teamwork, I think, is essential. Yeah, indeed, very much. And you turn right your now. TV down. Ah. I'm just 
it. Thank you. You can carry on now. Uh, well, uh, like I said, teamwork is crucial. As long as they don't end up throwing each other off the road, that is the crucial thing. Now, right now, uh, Ethan had a wolf. How's about all that? Just good, boss. Stop behind Big Kid Daddy, meanwhile, up front. Very much a race of two hearts. Very processional as well. There is not a lot of action going on, Jess, is there? No, there's not. And I think that is uh, what we've seen for the last part of the the sprint race as well, apart from obviously the top two. And uh, I think we're seeing the uh, the mid midfield really start to battle, whereas everybody else is pretty much running their own race and hopefully uh, to get to the end. But sometimes in these type of races, Evil, you get races like that and you just got to live within sometimes. For, for people like Tinnis, you can just take it in your stride. In the Tinnis, running away with it up front. He leads this race. 6.9 seconds, almost seven seconds to the dot ahead of the car behind. Vicky Danny ahead of Jasko right now, doing an incredible job in second and third. The uh, two Italian, uh, the Vodafone livery team, doing an incredible job. As long as they don't end up car throwing each other for over, they almost did earlier on today, when they were uh, both sideways on the grass. Behind them by Raxxon, trying to close up there. 53 three is almost a second a lap slower than the uh, driver ahead of Jasper, who's setting 52, he's the quickest man on the circuit. Then we've got these Gaggle and Mercedes there, Wolf, Gaza, and Ethan. Dafino ahead of Scald, who's now ahead of Esser after he got that through earlier on. Leonardo in 11, Fogarty down in 12, Vectro, a disappointing 13, but this is a circuit that I did really think Vectro was going to be too come flat. It's a very narrow circuit for a control, but and it's proving as well because is also not really where you'd expect him to be either, is he? No, but uh, sometimes you just got to live with it really and uh, they got to uh, keep going as much as possible because you never know what might happen. And uh, there's certain tracks that Scald might, um, Vetro might get used to a bit more in the calendar so they're going to hope um, that, that, that they'll do well in those tracks. But uh, there are always some tracks, you, me and my experience is evil and also myself as well because I do a bit of league racing, not from Project Cars 2 but for something else, not going to say which league it is, but uh, I always find that there's tracks that I hate and tracks that I like and uh, obviously you've got to concentrate on all tracks but you, you never know, but the ones you like you can really look forward to and just start to uh, put the hammer down a little bit as uh, I did see a little bit of a lock up from Gaza there um, going into that head, that chicane there, so uh, um, he's still catching Wolf. You can see the damage from Wolf. Very visible yeah, there. Struggling. He is struggling a little bit there. So hopefully he could uh, bounce back as, he's, uh, as his teammate is uh, starting to pull ahead. So uh, his teammate has helped him all he could. Now Ethan is running his own race and letting Wolf try and defend from the gather. Yeah, well, let's see, of course. Well, that's it. Left or right. It's going to be left side. Oh, oh, huge accident. Oh, God. Oh goodness, he Clips. is spun and he's, yeah, he's definitely going to go into the pits now. As, uh... Gaza, what on earth happened there? Ah, did they have... No, I just heard, by the way, Dylan hasn't got any damage from that. Uh, Dylan didn't get damage from that then. So, right, that's, that's incredible then. So, didn't get any damage from that one. Is he going to come in? No, he's not. Gaza's disconnected. I'm not sure what on earth Oh, it might be Gaza's there. retirement. I don't know. I think because Wolf has been, so I think Wolf's been caught up in, well, has been the court, the face of uh, pretty much two incidents now. The one, the first one with Jazzman and potentially one with Gaza as well. And we didn't really see what happened, pretty much. It was impossible to tell whose fault it was in the second one. And obviously, we didn't see the first one until uh, Evil pointed it out to me. So, uh, I yeah. think that was lag just there. I'm not too sure what was it happened like? there. Yeah, I think that must have been left because uh, Gaza disconnected straight away. Unless something catastrophic happened there. Yeah, it might have been internet. I'm sure it might be internet. Very of indeed. So, um, whatever happened there, hopefully that is not bad as my game is disconnected. And... Ah. Hold on a second. Am I... Uh, can I chuck you in it? Ah, no, I can't. I, I tried the normal button. For an invite, and I can't chuck you an invite. So uh, we are pretty much stuck with this battle going on as Boy Raxa and uh, Big Kid Daddy are fighting over 
third place at the moment. That's probably the only battle you're going to see until uh, Mr. Evil Dragon gets back in the session then. So here comes Boy Raxa on Big Kid Daddy. There he goes. Another position. He goes. And uh, he's going to worry about Jesco now up in second place for now. You can see Ethan in the background just wheeling um, wheeling uh, the, over the cars in. So he's not going up, isn't he? He's just trying to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. So, uh, yeah, Ethan doing pretty well to uh, try and catch up. But uh, I'm quite nope. sure that Wolf didn't get any damage from that. Cause that looked like a nasty shun earlier. My, my, oh, my. Yeah, and for some reason, it won't let me back in the uh, servers there, Jess. So, um... Ah, we're going to be screwed then. <laughs> so, uh, for whatever reason, I think the servers are playing fiddlesticks with us today, unfortunately. And uh, that can happen, of course. They are very overloaded. Um saying there is no servers available out there so ah uh, we might get a mass disconnect soon if that's the case so let's hope that's not the case and hopefully that's just a bit of a uh, small situation um it won't let me back in so i fortunately i can't do a lot uh, hopefully you can still see something going on Jessica. yeah I, I, can, I can still see something going on but i think we're only going to be following boy racks until the end of this race now as much as he would like it but uh yeah we're not going to see what's happening up front, and uh, that's annoying because we, we, because there's people trying to catch up to the guys up ahead. So that's probably the only thing we might possibly see right now. So uh, yeah, it is. A, it is quite a lot more people than right, normal. Yeah, do it back in. Uh, did you, you did get a spare? Uh, did you, I did send you a spare yeah. invite. Yeah, let's you, see if I can get back in. Hopefully, it doesn't cause any issues for the rest of us. Try it. We'll see anyway. We'll find out. Fingers crossed. I've never experienced this when a director has disconnected from the session and uh, I'm left to do nothing. Hopefully in the new game they uh, um, switch over controls. If the broadcaster disconnects, it transfer. No, if the director disconnects, the broadcaster automatically transfers to director. But it hasn't introduced that yet. But hopefully it does that in the new game because otherwise, because that'll be a lot easier. Um, so otherwise we'll be stuck on the same drivers the whole time really and uh, that'll be a bit of a shame and uh, still no sign of the dragon right now so uh, oh I think he's joined okay there we go as a uh, it's kind of a bit of radio broadcast if it's kind of not but it's not much happening on the circuit anyway so uh, you're not really missing out on that much on the circuit right now as uh, boy Raxa is still wheeling in just uh, for it's pretty much second place right now Tinnis is running away with it right now in the lead, so uh, Tinnis is looking favourite to be winning this race outright at the moment. As uh, he's got Ethan, you can see the try. Ethan's about seven seconds, I think. Um, they're probably not going to catch up soon, but Big Kid Daddy, though, he is about, I think, three seconds behind. So uh, it's between, I think, Boy Raxa and Jasko for uh, P2. And I think that's the only battles happening on the circuit. Evil, let me know when you're back. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, currently on 81% uh, joining. So yeah, it, we know it takes a while. Well. Hey, there we go. And uh, we've got, you need to put the stuff back, Evil, because we've got no timer. There we go. <laughs> there we go. The birthday boy is back and I can have uh, my freedom back and I can see more battles. It's great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Oh. That was Leonardo in the wall. That was Leonardo touching the wall then. So, I don't think he might have got damaged. Uh, so, Wolf, is it, did he come in in the meantime? Or, I was thinking that was only spun, of course. Defina has now got ahead of him. So, um, I'm not sure what I've missed since that happened. No, but I don't know what we missed because I was uh, following exactly the same thing. So, you know, we'll see anyways. Boy Raxa, uh, I think he's not improving on his lap time because see. Uh, uh, Jasko, I think, is pulling away a bit more now. So, yeah, I, I did notice. I think I agree with you, Evil. The Lambo is starting to get a lot fast for some reason. Are oh, they starting to get more glued onto the tracks? So we've got a Lambo that is leading the race. And in second as well. And a Mercedes comes, in third. Yeah. So we've got then a Lambo 1-2. Lambo in fourth. That is our of uh, Big Daddy's dropping back now uh, for every reason. He must have made a sick reason. Seven that last lap. Very slow indeed. Then comes Ethan. Up into fifth position. Ahead of Duffino in sixth. 
Wolfman in seventh ahead of Essa, who's oh, oh big god, accident. that was a massive that is shunt. Not nice to see. Oh my god, you're used to saying oh god, <laughs> and I'm the one saying oh god. Sorry, but Essa. As god damn it, our car's going to be limping back up uh, to the car from the side through the car left, and you can see crumpled and bang. That was the end of that one. Meanwhile, Gold is under pressure from Mr. Vetro. So, Ferrari versus Ginetta. This could be an interesting little battle, you know, down the back. Let's see. Is Gold going to put on a bit of a fight with our old Dutch friend? Let's find out. On board we go with the uh, mighty Ferrari then. The Italian stallion from Fiorano versus Shed from somewhere in Leeds, I think. I'm not exactly too sure. Certain where... Uh, Janetta is based, but it's definitely um, somewhere in the UK. I can't remember actually. Probably near Brands Hatch area, I think. Yeah, I think it's in the uh, little motorsport band area, Silverstone, Brands Hatch, rough area. Vetro a bit wide on the rear end, car with the step out of that's a common characteristic of that car. But, of course, up front, still got that Tinnis Jasco by Raxa. Uh, Vicky Day, Ethan, uh, Dufino, Wolf, Leonardo, Essa, Fogarty, Scold, and then Vector there. Who, oh, that's an accident. Oh, and my that God. Is death. That was and, like a hoverboard. And that was that curb. That was what we said earlier, Jess. You get on that curb, you get wide, and bang goes your uncle into the barrier. Bob's your uncle. And unfortunately, off you are into the barrier. Uh, and for poor old Vector, that's the first time he's made that mistake because no one else has hit that. Now, that might mean there might be debris all the way down there. Actually, he's on board with tennis. So let's have a little look through this corner because let's see. Is that hay bale going to be right on the racing line? And Jask and Tennis has hit it. Now, I don't know if that would have done him much damage, of course. Hopefully it hasn't, but it's luckily thrown that thing away. Yeah, we did see in qualifying, Evil, a lot of people got caught out with the debris, obviously, because someone we saw in qualifying took the brake marker board out, and uh, which didn't help anyone in any way, shape, or form. And uh, meanwhile, Vetro is going to the pits, and uh, he's going to keep going. So fair play to Vetro for um, limping the car. And even though he's going to be in the pits for a while, he's uh, wanted to finish this race because, uh, you know, you still get points for finishing, and... Uh, he is still going to do it. So, uh, fair play to Vetro. Um, I would give him the, the Endeavour Award for uh, for um, most consistent drive to actually stay in the race, um, even after having a bad one. So, uh, you know, I'm guessing he just doesn't want to give up right this second because you never know what other drivers might be feeling. But he's already two laps down already, or, or lap down. So, uh, he is not liking that one bit. But he's just still going to keep going at least. Leonardo, another person to keep going. He's an eight, so pretty good position for him. You can see, still see a bit of damage on the windows. And a bit on the back as well. So uh, he's not liking that one bit. And uh, there's a few cars that don't have any damage at all. One of it, which is Ethan. One of which is Tinnis. And Jasko, who doesn't have any damage either. Boy Raxa, another one doing well as well. It's big kid Daddy. And Essa has gone off into the final court there. And uh, actually, no. Few penultimate yeah. corners. And he's not liking life. He Ugh, look at his car. Uh, it that's... is not looking happy, I might add, right no, now. No, it's not. Like someone has rather hit that thing with a baseball bat a few times. It, it looks very sad, and that's damage, of course. He spun the car, looked like he goes, uh, he was in Fogarty, so I'm wondering, was that contact down there? Potentially, we were, unfortunately, not. No, well, that means was, uh, Skull will now be promoted up to Tempsis. Leonardo, meanwhile, right on the back of Wolf, and in fact, I might have just said he might have tossed him there with a bit of a lag bomb with that the good measure. He's definitely wanting to get past Wolf right now. Wolf's got damage of memory, he has that four arrow damage from earlier on. Somehow, doesn't have damage from that. Been. So uh, hopefully that is not going to affect him too much going forward. But let's find out. So far, Tina still leads this race. 53-1, 52-9 for Jasko. He's closing up maybe a 10 for second. A 10 for that for Milo. So if he's closing up 10 for second, that would be a very worrying case indeed. By Raxa is going 53-1. Uh, so he's taking a very identical pace to nearly a thousand as Tina. Big Kid Daddy's going a little bit slower compared to Ethan, who's catching bit by bit. Gap is now only 2.5 seconds with one under 4 or 5 laps to go. 
Dafino there in safe to noon. Good job. Meanwhile, behind them, we've got this battle between Wolf and Leonardo then. So uh, let's see if Leo can try and come through on the old uh, Wolf Dylan there. Oh! Of the Bit of a punty nearly uh, through the rear then. And uh, no pump to Reno, luckily, for Leonardo. He gets very close up behind him. And you've got alert for these drivers. They're pushing hard. They're fighting for what is going to be the silver spoon there. Wolf's going to try to cover the inside here. There's no way. Leonardo is going to go out. If he goes outside, there'll be contact. If he goes the inside, there will be contact. He's going to try the outside. Wolf ever so slightly twitches. You can see Wolf's rear end struggling there just to get grip. As now he just sits up behind him. Leonardo has to only back off. And you can see the dirty air effect. And the rear end steps out. He catches that one though. And the question is, does he try and make a dive through down into the hairpin? Because he knows Wolf's going to be struggling down there because of the lack of downforce. Let's find out then. Is he close enough to try and make a move? It'll be very risky to try and make a move into the open. He'll get better exit, presumably, because of the downforce. Meanwhile, Ethan is now with Big Kid down. And I think this should be a pretty easy uh, for Ethan. Yeah, well, I think so, due to the Mercedes uh, straight line speed. We did see that earlier as all well. Big Kid Daddy, I think, had a bit of an off there. Probably used the debris that was caused earlier. We did see a lot of people being caught out by the debris. Uh, we'll see... Uh, you said that Ethan is going to get past Big Kid Daddy easily. He's a little bit too further back at the moment. Yeah, he had to lift off Lex, that mistake, of course. So, uh, compromises his run down here for another lap. So, Big Kid Daddy's already breaks poor old Ethan down the straight and manages to slow him down. You'll uh, stay ahead. Meanwhile, we'll uh, cut backwards to this battle between Leonardo and Wolf. So, uh, one BSR driver attacking, one BSR driver defending, might I say, in between them is a Lamborghini. So one's attacking a Lamborghini, one's defending from a Lamborghini. The middle is a Lamborghini. So um, <laughs> wow. that is a flip of the spirit there. And it definitely is. Well, Ethan closing back up again on towards this. And on board we go on the bumper. Down towards some what flying speeds. I mean, it's amazing we're on board of a seat shot like this. Ethan's dropped it. No, he hasn't. Oh my God, yeah, that gave me a panic friend. attack. Uh, you don't want to drop that too close there. Big Kid Daddy really struggling with that rear end there. Ethan pushing that car I, I, to its limit. You've got, it's gone to what, three laps to go? Give or take, and these drivers are definitely on the ragged edge. You know, uh, we are approaching the home stretch. They want to give it their all, and uh, if Ethan wants to put up the pressure uh, now, he's got to do it really, as uh, Leonardo then um, is going to be going to on the attack for the other VSR driver. Uh, Wolfman, who uh, was hoping to get a few more points this race, but unfortunately did not quite work out. But still, he's going to get some decent points anyway and still remain in the top 10 right now. Um, obviously, Leonardo got his best finish in the first race of P8, so he's going to equal that um, this race, which is good news for him. Oh, if he keeps up, big kid daddy's right. gone off. So Ethan, Ethan says, Thank you very much. See you later. And he's. Uh, uh, got past Big Kid Daddy, no problems. So, well, that's a shame for Big Kid Daddy. He was running so well as well, but he's got a lot of making up to do now. He's already two seconds behind Ethan, and uh, he could have the likes of Defino catch up for him if he is not careful. As uh, Wolfman doing very well to keep um, the likes of Leonardo behind him. So, uh, and uh, look at this evil Fogarty in ninth place. He's doing very well. Yeah, he's uh, not making any mistakes, of course. The drivers behind them all have pitted for different infringements. As uh, was the hard oh. around the outside of Wolf there. Tries to get around the outside. He won't do it there. Wolf will just slightly pull left. No, he gives him the room. Fair play to him. He's giving him the space there. Uh, there's not really any opportunity to go around the outside. He'll be forced almost off the road there because there's got to be no grip. He goes oh, around the outside, God. but he loses. Oh, the circuit, and I think that might just be a little bit of an illegal overtake there. I think he might just get away with that. Yeah, I think so. Um, or even if it wasn't a legal overtake, I think he might be asked to uh, let through as Wolf is struggling. Oh my god, he's gone into the grass almost. I think he's not liking uh, his uh, setup one bit at the moment, as uh, we can see um, the, um, yeah, Leonardo pulling ball. away. So it might have um, the error damage that he got earlier might be starting to affect him a little bit more as uh, Fogarty could take advantage of this bit maybe too late little too late for him as we've got pretty much on the third to final lap of this race so far as Tinnis is 
having no mistakes up in front. He must be loving life. Uh, uh, a familiar sight for Tillis right now as he's uh, used to leading this race. The conditions are getting better though. So we might see lap times start to uh, uh, be a lot faster. The fastest lap for him so far. Well, his last lap was a 152.9. So uh, that's pretty good from him. And uh, obviously Jasko is a lot faster than him as well. And Boy Raxa matching uh, Jazz, Jasko's pace quite a lot there. So, uh, and he's catching him. So, uh, you know, Boy Raxa could be on for another battle uh, for this time P2 instead of P1. So uh, he is not... He is uh, not having those positions easy, isn't he, Evil? No, he very much is not. But behind him, we've got uh, Ethan and Big Kid Daddy. Those two have been having a little scrap the last couple of laps. That is Vetru seeing in the background who is last. If you're wondering. Meanwhile, Dafino, there he is in sixth position. He's getting caught by Leonardo. So uh, the two yellow submarines are uh, going for it right down the back there. And now ahead of Wolf, who made that mistake earlier on, who has survived two spectacular actions might i add in this race uh three if you're counting the one with jazz members so i'll have to have a look later on because i have no idea how it happened uh Fogarty, meanwhile down in ninth position ahead of gold in 10th essa in 11th position and vetro down in 12th and it's all but laps there the next class lap in will be one of leonardo i think or oh, that'll be duffino it is duffino well not a lot left, Jess. We've only got what is going to be the last lap after uh, this one. And you, you got to say, Tennis, I said it was Odd's favourite. And, well, no, it's not a surprise, really. He was one of the quickest drivers he ever was involved in that crash on the last race, where he got on the curb and, uh, of course, slammed the wall down to where Vetri slammed it earlier today. And he is all set. As long as this next lap goes his way to win here in race two and if that I think maybe even extends his championship advantage at the front that would be good for uh, tennis obviously um, he was fourth before the, the first two races and uh, he's going to probably jump quite a lot in the standings after that so a uh, fair play to tennis as tennis is going to be starting then the final lap of this race 21 laps were done now on the 22nd final racing lap obviously because there was one formation lap and uh, the guys behind are picking up the pace but it's going to be too little too late if there was more laps they would have had more time to try and catch up to them but obviously um, each one every driver has different fuel loads as Boyrax has gone in, almost gone into the grass again so um, sometimes the loser co loss of concentration might have uh, affected them in some way as um, Tillis can afford to uh, uh, ease off a little bit, but but not too much though, because otherwise uh, the guys behind might catch up to him quite quickly. But we're almost certain that the podium is going to stay as it is, with uh, Jasko and Boy Raxit in third. So that is going to be good for them, as uh, obviously we lost uh, Gaza um, um, in this race, which is a bit of a shame. And uh, yeah, that is I think that was the only retirement. I can't remember who other. Else retired. I think it was uh, Dafino. No, Dafino still. Dafino's in fifth. Where did he come from? Dafino's in fifth damage. place. Oh, ethan has got damage. Spun okay. It, spun it on the curb, lad. So he's got down towards the half and he spun it. But um. Ah, that's a shame for Ethan then. Yeah. He's running well, fourth. Here comes Tennis, lad. He took the lead earlier on, and he's only got really one corner to go. Never mind what's going on down the back because Ethan's from up. Here we go, then. Tennis. We didn't say it last week because we saw Wolf run out of fuel. This week, we will see him win a race. Tennis comes to the line, then. He took the lead. He stayed there. And Tennis wins here in France. He wins here at Circuit LSR. He finally gets that second victory of the season. And with that, cementing himself as a championship runner. Just goes second by Raxa third. Big Kid Daddy's going to finish in fourth and behind them there. Ethan's in trouble. He's dropping down the field like a stone in water. He's got his teammate as well. Yeah, um, he's finished ahead of him. Big Kid Daddy is going to finish fourth then across the line. He comes. A dandy fourth. Dafino. Fifth. Very impressive. Leonardo, 
Very yeah, good result for him. Leonardo will finish sixth. Ethan is going to finish uh, a rather broken seventh. Ahead of Wolf in eighth. Vetro's parked the car in the side of the circuit. And then we're waiting for the likes of Gold and Fogarty to cross the line. There's Fogarty across the line then down in ninth position. And then we are just waiting for the car of Gold as well as Essa. So both the sheds. Last to finish on the lead lap. Slow work to build for that team. Fogarty ninth then. Recovery job from what was almost a lap down earth from. To finish then up in ninth position. Capitalising on others' mistakes. As Vetro is doing some sensory donuts through the grass there down at the bottom of the circuit. Here goes Skull there. Cross line to finish in 10th position. I think there might be one bit of an accident that happened. Oh, God. Oh, my word. What happened to Scold and uh, Ethan now? I don't know. That was kind They're of... They're a like... friendly rivalry there. They're, they're, they're like doing that. They're like... Yeah, they do. They yeah, want to have a bit of a laugh, won't they? Well, that was a good race. I mean, drama from the start, but uh, for most of these guys, they kept it clean, which was great to see. So, we've got Tinnis, who wins with Jasko in second. Another good result for Jasko. That's going to help him in the championship. Boy Raxa. Third place, he got a P2 um, in the first race, a P3 in the second race. Mr. Consistent, we said earlier the consistency is key and uh, that has helped Raxa here today. Big Kid Daddy in fourth, Dufino fifth, Leonardo sixth, uh, Ethan seventh, McWolfman in eighth, Fogarty ninth, Skull tenth, and then we got Essa Racing and Vetro rounding up your finishes and your retirement this race is Papano. Everybody else has finished evil, so uh, that's good to see, but shame for Papano, who um, had a race to forget, only made five laps of this race, so uh, yeah, not good, and somehow Vetra got a 10 second penalty there, but that didn't yes. really affect him, but there we go. But uh, we will start to focus on the next race, which if I look at my calendar, it's at Rapana next week yes. in Rapuna. Australia. New Zealand. New Zealand. I'm getting the uh, flags mixed up. I do apologise. I've got so many things wrong, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that race. Um, I think I've, I think it was in one of the seasons I commentated on. I can't remember, but I'm sure it was. But uh, yeah, it is going to be a no. I think, if I'm not mistaken, if I look at the calendar, oh, it's a 90-minute race. Yeah, it's 90 minutes, so it will be reverse championship standings. So whoever. So basically, whoever has made all three races and is at the bottom of those lot, they will be starting uh, last. So that will be uh, Fogarty. They'll be on pole. Uh, uh, actually, no, they'll be on pole. So Fogarty will be starting pole with uh, uh, by looks of things, unless the championship standings change. But uh, yeah, should be interesting there. And uh, yeah, um, do we have anyone on Discord for interviews, or should we wrap uh, this up, no, people? No, we don't. Let's wrap it up then. So. Um... Thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. I've been Evil, birthday boy here. Um, Jess has been Jess. And thank you for all our drivers for showing us exactly the reason why the circuit was very much retired in 1994. Until next week, when we go to another very classical circuit, take care. Goodbye. <laughs>